King's Dominion is a solid cedar fair park that currently has 13 different roller coasters, including one of the best top twos in the world with Intimidator 305 and Twisted Timbers. In this video, I will be ranking the top 15 rides at King's Dominion. Before starting the video, I want to note a few rides that will and will not be included. I have been visiting this park for one and a half decades, so this list will include a few defunct attractions. This list will not be including any attractions from the Soak City Water Park though, because I've never visited there. Number 15, Reptilian. This re-themed mock bobsled is a decent experience. Most of the coaster is pretty tame, but the transition into the final helix is pretty quick and offers some faint weightlessness. Just make sure to lean forwards in this one, because the train rattles down the slad troth, as I mentioned in my review. Number 14, Racer 75. The former Rebel Yellwood coaster got a ton of track work, so it's running decently fast and smooth. But despite all those bunny hills, Racer 75 just doesn't have much airtime. The only moment now is the entry into the far turnaround up front, which does really catapult you out of your seat though. The racing element is solid on the outward leg, but whether you race depends on the staffing and crowd levels. Number 13, Delirium. This Mondial Frisbee is pretty large, but it doesn't have the best cycle. It only offers 2-3 max swings. Those max swings do offer decent floater airtime though. I just wish there were more of them. Number 12, Shenandoah Lumber Company. This is a relaxing log flume. I love the heavily wooded setting. The drops in this one are okay, but the first one can really soak you, especially if you're up front. Up next would have been the Crypt. The former Huss top spin had a solid cycle. There were two separate instances where you'd get three to four forceful flips in a row. Then there were some minimal water and fire effects to accompany those flips in the ride's final years. Number 11, Anaconda. This Aero multi-looper has a great location over the water and a strong start. The underwater tunnel is cool and then you have a forceful vertical loop and sidewinder. The second half is awkward though. The mid-course saps the ride of all its speed and then you crawl through these elevated pretzel turns. These transitions are less than ideal so watch your head. Then the final two corkscrews are taken so slowly that they have rare hang time for an arrow. Number 10, Backlot Stunt Coaster. This premier family launch coaster has a shockingly forceful helix at the start. I always gray out here from the sustained G's. The rest of the ride is pretty mild, but there are some small pops of airtime and visuals. The effects in this one are often broken, but the visuals alone are strong enough to enhance the experience. Number 9, Wind Seeker. This giant Mondial swing ride offers breathtaking views of King's Dominion. This park really has an underrated skyline, especially because it towers over the surrounding woods, and it's neat getting that view from so high up. Number 8, Boo Blasters and Boo Hill. This Sally Dark ride is a nice change of pace from the park's thrills. The 2D aesthetic matches the other Boo Blasters, but you have helpful laser sights in this one, and all of the targets and effects work here. Number 7, Tombili. This may be the worst SNS free spin, but it's still a fun ride. The magnets induce a few wild flips along the course, but the trims in the Raven turns definitely hamper the pacing and intensity compared to the ones found at the Six Flags parks. However, I love this attraction's soundtrack and how it was incorporated into the recently rethemed Jungle Expedition area. Up next would have been Shockwave. How you felt about this ride was dependent if you hated the restraints. They were awkward, but I didn't find them uncomfortable. Shockwave had a forceful vertical loop and helix towards the start, but what stole the show for me was the airtime. It's such a bizarre sensation to get airtime on a stand-up, and Shockwave did this on the first drop in the back row, and the flurry of bunny hills in the second half. Number 6, Flight of Fear. This indoor Premier Rides launch coaster has some fun sci-fi theming in the queue line. I don't love how cramped the restraints are, but thankfully the lap bars do prevent headbanging. There's just some shuffling along the course. The experience starts with a respectable launch and three forceful inversions. The mid-course does bring the ride to a near halt and neuter the start of the second half, but the final corkscrew still sneaks up on you and it's pretty disorienting with the lighting. Number 5, Dominator. 
I'm still bummed this B&M Floorless is missing a 0G roll, but it's a pretty good ride. I like riding in the back for the whip on the first drop and the floater airtime off the mid-course brake run, but the inversions are the focal point. They don't have as much power as the older B&Ms, but the vertical loop produces a little hang time in the back, and the final two corkscrews have some mild whip to them. This ride does have some nice speed in the first half though, and it's pretty smooth. Number 4, Grizzly. This wood coaster has gotten a lot of flack recently, but I like the ride's layout and setting. You are pretty secluded from the rest of the park, which is why night rides on this coaster are so good. Then the ride is a satisfying mix of airtime and laterals. The two pops after the first turnaround are particularly strong. Then you have several instances of laterals in the turnarounds and the bank bunny hills. The ride can run rough on wheel seats, but it rides well up front. Up next would have been Hurler. The version of Hurler that could be experienced from 2010 onwards would not have made this list. That one rode similarly to the one you can experience at Carowinds today. But the version I first experienced in 2006 was very good. The ride had recently been retracked, so it was running smoothly. And there was no trim after the first drop at this point, so the train flew through the layout, delivering nice airtime in most of the ride's bunny hills. While I missed that version of Hurler, I have to admit the ride that replaced it is a far superior experience. Number 3, Drop Tower. This Intamin Drop Tower is a rush. You have a different seating arrangement with that massive ring. While it doesn't rotate like the gyro drops, you get a great view because this ride stands 305 feet or 93 meters tall. The employees tease you at the top via a speaker, and the drop occurs with no warning. And that drop is powerful, offering a nice stomach dropping sensation plus some nice floater airtime. Up next would have been Volcano the Blast Coaster. This intimate inverted launch coaster was removed due to maintenance issues, but the ride was such a thrilling and beloved experience. The ride started with a rolling launch that would suddenly engage, and that launch was pretty punchy. You'd then fly around a speedy turn and get boosted through an inversion out the top of a volcano. It was one of the most exciting visuals on any ride. The coaster then wound around the volcano, treating riders to three inline twists loaded with hang time. Volcano was short and a little repetitive, but I love the ride's uniqueness and visuals. Number 2, Twisted Timbers. The Rocky Mountain construction conversion of Hurler is an ejector airtime machine. This ride is advertised as having 20 airtime moments, and I believe it. Most of those airtime moments are strong pops of ejector airtime, but you have a signature three camelback sequence on the outward leg that adds in sustained airtime as well. This coaster also mixes in three inversions with the barrel roll down drop and the zero-g roll offering delightful hang time. It really is impressive how much RMC packed into a layout this small. This was my favorite ride in the park for a while as I mentioned in my review, but my most recent visit gave the spot to a different ride. And coming in number one is Intimidator 305. This Intamin Giga Coaster has a case as the most intense coaster ever built. Everyone talked about the turn after the first drop that's an automatic gray out and for some a blackout but the ride has several other moments of strong positive Gs and downright insane transitions. When I-305 changes direction, the train violently is snapped sideways, which somehow causes both laterals and airtime. And speaking of airtime, I-305 is very underrated in this department. Beyond those transitions, you have a massive first drop with good ejector airtime in the back, and a camelback under the lift hill with the best sustained ejector moment in the entire park. And all of these elements occur in rapid fire succession because this coaster is a speed demon. Check out my review if you want to hear more, but I-305 is the coaster for you if you love intensity. So those are my top 15 favorite rides and attractions at King's Dominion. What are your favorite rides at this Virginia theme park? Let me know what you think about any of the rides I mentioned or any you think I missed down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.